to make sure that their loved one did not die in vain. Through their pain and loss, they are fighting, and I, again, fighting, to make sure that no other family has to endure what they have endured. I'm inspired by them and their willingness to share their stories today. And um, at this point, um, the legislation is in. We read the, the, the number. And what we need you to be an advocate, to have your friends and family call about this immunization that can prevent the loss of life. And, you know, for a very, very long time, we didn't have this available to us. And science has brought us to this level. And without these immunizations on college campuses, and then you go into small when children start going to school, you know, it, it happens so quickly. And it's a droplet spread. So if we stand together and I happen to cough or share my water bottle, that's how easily this disease spreads. So we can prevent it, and we should prevent it. It's our responsibility. So any advocacy that you can do, I truly will appreciate it. Thank you. And then uh, my... Uh, go ahead, Caitlin. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we'd like to now ask uh, Michael LaForge to come and share his personal experience with meningococcal disease. Thank you. And thank you, Assemblywoman Gunther, for your amazing support. Um, hello, my name is Michael LaForge. I'm from Smithtown, New York, and I am a meningitis survivor uh, and a volunteer with the National Meningitis Association. Uh, in 2005, I was suddenly struck with meningococcal disease, which is also known as bacterial meningitis while vacationing with my family in Maine uh, on New Year's Eve. I went from being a strong and healthy 39-year-old father of three to feeling I li like I had flu-like symptoms to fighting for my life all within 24 hours. I felt fine when I went to bed shortly after the ball dropped that night. But when I woke up at 2 a.m., uh, my flu symptoms were so severe that we decided to return to Long Island right away. Within hours, of uh, returning uh, home, I was unconscious, and my wife observed a purplish rash uh, on, on my skin. Um, she put me on her back and rushed me to the hospital. Um, unfortunately, within hours of arriving at the hospital, my wife was told that I had a 10% chance of living and that I would not make it through the night. My family that rushed down from Maine to, to come to the emergency were told to go home and collect their suits and their dresses for what would be a funeral in the next several days. <clears throat> um, I have always been an athlete, and, and possibly that's what saved me. Uh, I had just completed the New York City Marathon one month prior to becoming ill. But that day, literally every organ in my body stopped, other than my heart and my brain. I was in a coma for eight days, and I had to undergo months of hospitalization and dialysis. I had a dozen surgeries. And ultimately, I lost my right leg below the knee and most of my left foot. Standing here today with Patty and, and Deb um, and Assemblywoman Gunther, um, I am fully supportive of the bill. Um, I know that vaccination is the best way to stop this devastating disease. I've met far too many families who have lost loved ones to men meningitis. And I know that I'm one of the lucky ones. We need to prevent this horrible disease from infecting others. Vex vaccination is absolutely the best way to do that. Um, vaccination of myself or the person that passed the disease to me would have prevented the horrible um, situation that I and my family had to go through. Very simple research shows that the meningitis vaccine works. Um, this vaccination is completely safe, again, backed by scientific research, and in states where the uh, vaccination is required, there are less cases, period. It saves lives. There's no need for the suffering and death that this disease causes to take one more precious life. Thank you.